the American people built a ship of war. From the open deposits of the Mesabi Range in Minnesota, from Michigan and Pennsylvania, miners dug out the ore and loaded it. The smelters took it, fired the metal and poured it. In Birmingham and Pittsburgh and Cleveland, steel workers salted in the tungsten from Idaho, the Georgia manganese, the chromium from Oregon and California. Cast it, forged it, rolled it into tough steel plates. The men who did the job, pouring out of the machine shops in Ohio and Texas and Connecticut, streaming up the catwalks of a shipyard in Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, welding plates in a glare of blue fire, bearing down on the heavy riveting hammers, fitting the huge dynamos that give her life in the sea, the big shafts that convey her power to the sea, the bronze screws that drive her in the sea. The people of America built her and manned her and broke out her commission pennant. This is the ship. This is her day of battle the overcast morning of her last day. The escort vessels of the task force in a net around her, battle wagon, a light cruiser, destroyers. At daybreak, an observation plane reported the enemy striking force 110 miles to the southwest. Two carriers, three cruisers, five destroyers, heading 145 degrees true, speed 26 knots. The carrier readies her attack plane. The men arm them and fuel them. Pilots in airplane, in front of a blackboard headed Objective, Enemy Task Force, the instructions technical, the meaning plain, seek out and destroy. The ship puts up her attack squadrons in regular order. The dive bombers, the scout bombers, and the heavy torpedo bombers, wings folded out and locked tight. They find the enemy force and attack it. but the enemy planes too have found the American carrier. The alarm gongs go off in bursts. Condition A, general quarters. Shutter signals to the escort. Compartment doors dug tight. The big ship is driving up to full speed, turning hard into the wind. She gets off her defensive fighter. The sky begins to blossom with black. One enemy plane goes down, a long diagonal into the sea. Another roars close over the ship. A near miss. So near, the shock sends a returned fighter jouncing over the side. The ship is heeled and rushing, driven hard to elude the dive bombers. Full left rudder. At 30 knots, the big ship's wake is almost a right angle. Few of her planes, out of ammunition, get down as the first attack breaks off. 
The bridge warns the rest of the returning squadrons to land on another carrier. In the lull, the deck crews swarm out to check the damage. Once more, the alarm gun. Hard right rudder, the ship heels away from a new attack. Another bomb hits that. The battle wagon puts every useful gun into action. destroyer shine like a wild horse under the enemy bomb. Freighter looping up at a plane. Sky darkened with small thunderheads of black. Trained hour after hour in skeet shooting, the AA gunners swing their muscles on the attacker. Another enemy plane is hit, flaring in bursts. Two more falling at the same time, burning in the sea. another bomb through the flight deck. Plates burst. Torpedoes in the underbody. The damage control men snake out their long lines. Once more, battle for the life of the ship. But the smoke rolls up. Fires out of control. The escort vessels stand by to take off her crew. This is the afternoon of the day of battle. A pillar of cloud by day, a cloud of fire by night. The ship is lost, the battle won. Won by the men who built her and the men who manned her. At the Marshall and Gilbert Islands, in the Coral Sea, at Midway and Salamaua, Santa Cruz, Cape Esperance, Casablanca, Guadalcanal, New ships for the ships they fought so well. Hull after hull going down the ways. New planes lifting off their decks, the Avengers and Corsairs. The worker too is a fighter. The battle gongs clang for him too. The American people are building the ships and the victory.